Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Why are you even bothering doing reviews of singular episodes? It's because this episode was so monumental, so interesting, so fascinating that I couldn't help but at least just say something exclusively about this episode because there was so much good in this episode. Now, this is Infinity Train, Season 1, question mark? <laughs> episode 5, titled The Cat's Car, and that specifically refers to the cat from Episode 2. Now, Tulip and her crew leave the dinosaurs playing baseball train, which would have been a fascinating little side detour, but they talk about, like, yeah, we're immediately going to forget this afterwards. Like, you know, that's the funny thing about it. It's just, like, this side little detour that's not going to be really impactful, but it was just kind of fun while it was still there. But it's interesting that Tulip has gotten to a point where she doesn't even think too much about the crazy adventure she goes on. But we see that the Infinity Train has another ability, and that's specifically switching around the placements of various train cars. Moving some up, back, forward, all that good stuff. And the train that they ent end up entering into is one that has a lot of odd knickknacks and various little oddities here and there. And this is the train car of none other than the cat that Tulip met, who Tulip is immediately very standoffish, which we even find out she told Atticus about the cat and how she tried to, as Tulip puts it, kidnap one one, but you know, they had a deal. They did have an arrangement, but the cat was being a little sneaky little shit about the whole situation. But as Tulip immediately tries to leave the cat's train car, you know, the cat really tries her best to get Tulip to stay, and even ends up knocking over these cassette tapes, one of which contains Tulip's name. And the cat ends up kind of convincing Tulip to check it out, you know? Tulip even believes that maybe it might have some correlation to the number on her hand and a way to get it to go down. You know, it's just like, why? what it's going down to, they don't know, but, you know, it's worth a try. So the cat pops it in like an old VHS, if any of you whippersnappers out there actually know what a VHS is, but, you know, she pops it in, and, you know, Tulip starts to kind of wonder if maybe she might finally get some answers to all these questions, what exactly the train is, what her purpose here is, what it's trying to show her, because apparently these cassettes are actually contain actually contain the memories of various other passengers along the way, which Tulip really inquires into. It's just like, what other passengers? You know, how did they get off the train? Did they even manage to get off the train? What exactly happened? But before she can really start questioning the cat about the tape, she is sucked in to this white void of a world where this weird fuzzy screen turns on and it ends up showing her her own memories and you know these nice little fun events that she's been through in the past you know great fun moments and it even gets to the point where she's pulled into her moments her little you know happiest memories for the most part just jamming out in the back seat of the car going to this you know um, aquarium and having fun with her parents although kind of weird things happen in the course of this you know it, it just everything seems very idyllic very sweet but there's also these weird glitches where you know it seems like tulips talking to no one on a couch and you know this moment that just never seemed to happen there are these her parents have these creepy smiles and you know tulip ends up connecting the dots that something's not right which you know because Becomes even more apparent when this happens but you know then there's this moment where the static starts to seem to kind of claim her it starts to try to overtake her but you know she starts to relive some of her other her memories but she starts to realize that's not how that happened she remembers going that day 
and she was having a hard time seeing, you know, which is, I, I kind of connected with because I was around at this age, like, I think this is eight-year-old Tulip, or at least six, maybe, six or eight, you know, that was around the time where I needed glasses, and she's having a hard time seeing, and her parents are arguing, it's just like, oh, I told you to take her, she needed glasses, well, you should have taken her to an optometrist, when would I have had time for that, and, you know, all these moments where her parents were just fighting, you know, that things just weren't really as she thought they were you know and she even starts to notice that the static is starting to kind of you know come off of her it's starting to you know loosen its hold on her that moment on the couch it was her giving a, her dad a blanket who was you know sleeping on the couch you know, and she even remembers the day that her parents told her that they were getting a divorce, but, you know, Tulip starts to realize, no, that's not how this happened. You know, it might have felt terrible, horrifying, sad, you know, tumultuous, but no, it was a very simple day. Her parents called her downstairs. They gave her a talk. You know, and while the current Tulip understands that, you know, her parents were going through a lot, but, you know, the past Tulip, you know, has this moment where she's just kind of burying it deep down. Her parents are telling her, you know, this isn't your fault. You need to understand, you know, you might have noticed we've been having these rough patches and these moments, but because everything's just kind of come to a point where we just can't take it really anymore you know these are people with their own lives and their lives are hell right now but for this for tulip this moment was hell you know i, I love this little moment where you see her you know just fidgeting tearing up this napkin you know and she's she's trying to hide her frustration and her you know anger at this moment and you know current tulip understands this she understands that she wasn't fine that this moment really broke her for the most part and her parents do their best to kind of talk her through it but this this is such a powerful moment because honestly you don't see things like this just this talk you see the before and you see the after but you don't so much see the during you don't see that nitty-gritty little moments where things were just breaking down you know where T tulip lost her cool because she felt like her parents changed everything she had this idyllic version of her life in her mind but you know that's hindsight that's nostalgia you know when you're a kid everything seems peachy keen at all times every time but no tulip even admits that you know, it wasn't fire and brimstone and hell, but the real truth of the matter is she disguised her memories. She, you know, put this great influence on the past. She changed it to kind of make herself feel a little bit better. Like things just kind of ended because they wanted it to end. But in truth, it was always going to end. Now that she's older, she has no choice but to realize that it was inevitable. Her parents were miserable together. They didn't make each other happy. And that's the unfortunate thing about divorce. Sometimes it just kind of happens. Hell, that's a fear of mine if I were to ever have children. Just that, you know, the effect you could have on your children just by, you know, bringing them into the world. You don't know how they'll react to things. Some kids can, you know, know that their parents are going through divorce and just kind of roll with it. And other people, others, not so much. They have a hard time with this. They can't accept this. And they, they lash out. They get into trouble. They do very severe things like running away. But Tulip starts to kind of come back to reality. She comes out of this trance that she was given. 
and she's pissed. She's annoyed, and the cat is surprised. She thought it would take more time for Tulip to actually work her way out of that situation, but she got out in no time at all. And she's furious. The cat was trying to trap her. And she, she's ready to leave. But when the cat points out that, hey, your number is changing. Your number is going down. Don't you want to study the tape? Understand it. Figure something out about it. You know, you were, you, you were so close to, you know, changing things to learning something you know the cat lets on that she knows more than what she's putting out but tulip tulip's had enough she doesn't care about the number she doesn't care about the cat she doesn't care about whatever lesson the train is trying to teach her and by the way i love this moment where she's just looming over the cat because she's just so done with it all while she did get to confront her past and come to an understanding about it, this was not what she wanted. This wasn't the way she wanted it to be. You know, she was fine with the blissful ignorance that, oh, they changed things. They did all of this, but now she's had to come to the harsh reality that, no, her memories, her happiest memories were lies. The happiness wasn't always there. And you gotta question, was it ever really there? Tulip now has to come to terms with the thought that maybe, maybe the happiness in her life was never happiness to begin with. And the only thing left to do now is move forward. And as Tulip leaves, the cat's car gets jettisoned forward, further towards the front of the train, where she comes upon, what was it, what is this person called? The steward, there we go. I thought it was the conductor, but they're called the steward, who question, where is the passenger? And the cat tells him, oh, I, I, they were supposed, the tape didn't work. You know, they were only in momentarily. It's not my fault. They escaped. And we see this figure, you know, this unknown figure just off, kind of communicating with the steward. And, you know, it, the steward gets ready to kill the cat, just end the cat right there and then. The cat promises that they'll help the steward find the girl. You know, find the passenger. It's only through them that they'll be able to track the girl down. And the steward, the person in the shadows has the steward let the cat live. But as a show that if the cat fails again, there will be no second chances. The steward destroys almost every object in the cat's car. Much to the dismay of the cat. Which really make, begs the question, why does the cat hoard so much? Why does the cat want so many things? What do these things mean to the cat? Who is the cat? Why is the cat doing these things? Why has the cat decided to ally herself with the steward and the unknown figure? <clears throat> it's, it's just such a good solid episode that really shines all on its own you know you get so much of tulip's backstory and just the despair that she's suffered over time you know that she's now has to really come to terms with the fact that something was always wrong in the background you know and i she turned a blind eye to that and it just caused her more grief later down the line when you don't acknowledge that things weren't as good as you thought they were, it can just cause you to suffer more later down the line. But I really want to hear your thoughts on this episode, how they portrayed the parents' divorce, how just really real they made Tulip as a character, how we sometimes lie to ourselves to protect ourselves, how we sometimes lash out, 
And hell, if you're the child of a divorce, how are you able to overcome this situation? I'm fascinated to know. My home life wasn't perfect, but I, I didn't really have to go through something like this. You know, but mostly because there was a death of one parent, but you know, everyone has their own baggage. Everyone remembers things differently. Everyone goes through things differently. But you know, it really begs the question, what's real and what's not? What do we truly place a value on? Again, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you liked this video, leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and tell me what I did wrong in the comment section below. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you don't miss when I finally get around to the finale of this series. Uh, and if you want to find me on social media, just Google Do's Diz Din. I don't really do too much on it, but hey, maybe I'll give you a follow back. And until the next video, just remember that you gotta really th put things into perspective. What do you truly value? And do those things actually have meaning? Or is it the meaning you put behind them? And is that meaning a lie? It really makes you wonder. Until next time, I'm Deuce Diz Din, and I think it's time for bed. Bye bye.